It's no secret that I love the Souls games, and they do so much right that I feel like I could talk for hours on their seemingly insignificant details, from a single line of dialogue, to the flowing majesty of hunter clothing, to their extraordinarily engaging enemy movesets. We're talking about the last one. Playing Bloodborne, which was the first Souls game I completed, was the first time I actually realised there was a team of people making the games I played. It sounds dumb as shit, and it is, but it's honestly true. I could tell that Fallout and Skyrim, or GTA and Red Dead were made by the same people, but while their game design decisions seemed to be made almost at random, it felt like Bloodborne was a conversation between me and the developer, where I was saying, oh, and what if I play like this? And they were saying, no that's dumb, you deserve to be dead, you're supposed to sneak up on the pig and give it a colonoscopy instead. There are so many games where melee combat is just a complete fucking mess. There's no way to avoid or interact with enemy attacks, and so it doesn't matter at all what enemy you're fighting. And usually the game is so painfully easy that even with the extra options, the most effective tactic for every single fight is to just spam attack whilst tanking hits, and heal afterwards if you even need to. In a word, it's mindless. In three words, it's bloody brain dead bullshit. A lot of games try to make their combat more interesting by giving you a lot of offensive options, but if spamming the R1 button is the highest DPS, and is the easiest to pull off, there's absolutely no incentive to do anything else. The Devil May Cry games do an amazing job of actually encouraging varied interesting gameplay with their coolness ratings, which govern how many berserk references enemies drop, but the issue is that the badass combos you can pull off can still be done on almost any enemy. You're engaging with the character in your controller in an amazing way, but you're not really engaging with the game world itself. Even in Bloodborne, which has some of the most interesting and diverse movesets with weapons that can transform into different weapons while attacking at the same time, the only thing I ever see people do is use the R1 of Ludwig's Holy Blade because everyone on the internet says it's the strongest weapon in the game. But even though it's still disappointing, it's actually kind of fine because the Souls games have a lot of good features that punish this mindless playstyle. I mean, the level of effort that has gone into the combat of Souls games makes everything else look like it was baby's first combat system in comparison. Firstly, there's a stamina system, so if you try to stunlock everything to death, you're going to be left unable to attack, or get out of the way or block, and you're going to die. Secondly, the animations are slow as shit, so if you use a heavy weapon you're going to need to account for the start up and cooldown frames otherwise you're going to get stunned and do no damage at all. And this ties into that, but thirdly, there's a poise system. So if you use a fast weapon to get around the slow animations, you're going to be absolutely fucked if you try to fight anything you can't stun lock. And if you get hit by an enemy, you're going to get stunned yourself. The interplay of these three core mechanics alone makes these games so fucking good to play. Every attack is a tactical decision in and of itself, you go for a heavy weapon and spend all day getting stunned by faster enemies where every attack better hit because you only have enough stamina to swing that hunk of metal twice, or do you go for a light weapon that has no range and does no damage and won't stun lock shit unless you do a charged R2. I think the reason the Souls games are seen as so hard and frustrating to a lot of people is because you actually have to think to achieve victory where other games have taught them their entire lives that the way to win is to mindlessly press attack over and over until whatever is in front of you is melted into nothing. More important than any of this though is the fact that this system forces you to engage with the enemies you're facing. When you can't stunlock everything to death, you need a different option to actually be able to win, and the best part about the Souls games are the three-ish ways you can react to enemy attacks. You can dodge, block, and parry. Enemy attacks in Souls games will fuck you up. They really feel like one of the only franchises where the enemies are actually trying to kill you rather than just standing there waiting to die, and you need to not get hit by them if you want to survive. In Bloodborne, blocking was highly de-emphasized in favour of dodging, and because of that I've never actually used a shield in a Souls game, but their premise is simple. 
you get a good shield, you press L1, and in return for stamina, you can block the damage. The stamina stops you from just holding your shield up constantly, but my personal preference is parrying and dodging. It's possible to get lucky in a Souls game and beat a boss first try by dodging based solely on reactions alone, but more often than not, you're going to die over and over. The core takeaway from this is that each death is not a defeat, but a learning experience. You might not realise it at the time, but you're slowly progressing from someone who knows fuck all about a boss, to someone who knows it well enough to beat it. And this is why I felt like Bloodborne was speaking to me. The more and more you fight a boss, the more you'll recognise its attacks, especially if that attack is the same one that kills you over and over. It's literally the developer saying, hey, this attack, and asking you if you've learned how to dodge it yet. A lot of the time, the answer will be no, or you'll be in the middle of a heal or out of stamina, but it feels fucking amazing that first time you figure out how to avoid Medea's dumbass laser beam which killed you 10 times already. To win, you need to notice the long wind up before the one hit KO AOE attack. You need to tell the subtle difference between the attack combo that has 3 swings and the attack combo that has 5, and you need to see what the change is at half health that makes Maria use blood blades. When you see these people that can beat the game without dodging or running, it's not just because they're amazing at the game, it's because they know every single attack pattern that was programmed into the boss and even the exact hitboxes of it. A lot of great games do an excellent job of teaching players how to win in an almost invisible way. Mario boss fights are great at it, and as much as I can appreciate that style, I love that the Souls games are more on the side of, you're going to notice this boss I spent two weeks programming and playtesting, and you're gonna learn its moves, or you're gonna die. To put it bluntly, and it sounds really fucking dumb, to win, you need to have perseverance, and you need to be paying attention. And it's this paying attention that I'd never really done until I played Bloodborne. There are so many games where I've played them, and I can tell you I've liked them, but I can't remember a single enemy attack. Yet in all of the Souls games I feel like I can picture the movesets of enemies, and especially bosses, in my head easily. The fact that you need this constant vigilance when you're fighting enemies, makes it so that you're so much more engaged with the world you're in. Instead of just focusing on what you and your character are doing, it's almost more important to focus on the enemy you're facing and see what they're doing. You need to react to each attack with the right dodge at the right time in the right direction, or you're dead. The engagement actually allows the developers to give so much personality to a boss through its moveset, and provide extra, almost easter egg style information to long time players. Through moveset alone, it's immediately possible to recognise the influence of Artorius in the fighting style of the Farron Legion. I'm not sure it means anything, but I was so excited when I saw Frida use the same spin move as Lady Maria, and fighting Gunda the second time in his prime is such an insane juxtaposition to the slow corrupted version that tests us as the first boss. The attack animations are so clear and unique that you can even tell which pages of Berserk Miyazaki has been practicing kissing on. In Sekiro, this effect is magnified a hundred times over, because you're almost required to perfectly parry every single attack of a boss in order to succeed. In that game, you can't just get a lucky dodge in, your parries need to be timed to a boss's attack patterns or you die and so you need to pay so much more attention to the startup animations and the rests in the middle of combos, and on top of that, they have sweeps and stabs and grabs that all need to be countered in a specific way too. I could wordlessly tell whether someone was trained by Ishin or Owl or the Ministry based on the way they fought alone, and that's one of the most fucking badass things that's ever existed in any game. It's so fucking perfect because it means you know exactly how and why you died in any Souls game. On the first few runs you might just be getting your bearings, but after that you know whether you dodged too late or in the wrong direction or got way too greedy while attacking. It never just kills you without warning, you always know it's your fault and not the game's. It's even better as a veteran of the Souls games because it feels like the developers are purposely fucking with you as their games go on. In Dark Souls 3, and even more so in Elden Ring, the punishment for spamming roll is insane. 
Even in Bloodborne, just hammering dodge to get out of the way was a pretty effective tactic for removing yourself from a situation enough to heal, and you'd luckily get away from most attacks in the process. The double roll to get you as far away as possible is pretty much muscle memory for every Souls player, but in a similar vein to Sekiro, it's clear that this sloppy play is the next on the hit list for From Software, and enemies will have even more rests in their combos to allow them to hit you just as you're recovering from that second roll, and I for one can't wait for it. Basically, what I'm trying to say here is that if you didn't know I liked them already, I think the Souls games are fucking awesome. Their combat is so many leagues ahead of the competition that they're constantly innovating and coming up with amazing refinements to Dark Souls 3, while everyone else is still failing to copy Dark Souls 1. Every single detail has clearly had so much effort put into it, and their style of forcing the player to pay attention to enemies and learn from their mistakes makes their games memorable and enthralling in a way that makes me want to melt them on a spoon and inject them into my veins. Their bosses are experiences that can't be forgotten, because if you don't memorize every single move they have, you're fucking dead, and it allows them to speak so clearly to the player through every animation. I went in trying to make a 5 minute video about their boss design, and ended up talking about their entire combat system. Even though I've cut this script down a shitload, I still feel like I need to elaborate on what makes their stamina system and parrying and poise so great. I just love it that much. Thank you, of course, to From Software for just being the best that there is. Thank you to every Souls boss I've died to for teaching me to learn. And thank you for watching. Peace.